Hi everyone, welcome back. Team Talk TV, episode 66. There's four of us on the show today. Um, we welcome Coach, Ibs and Nacy. Nice to have you back, Nacy. Um, it's a pack show. It's been a great Super Sunday uh, and we'll get into a lot of things. So we'll get started. Uh, we've just watched Manchester United beat Newcastle United by three goals to one. Goal scored by, I don't remember who scored the first goal, but it was Alan St. Maximum who pulled the one back. Daniel James, Rashford and scored, Fernandez, Rashford, 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 thank you very much, Ibs. Yeah, I wasn't watching it. You can imagine why. Um, um, quickly then, just get a quick recap on that game. Well, early right to ask the Man United fan coach. Just mm. a quick assessment of uh, United's 3-1 win against Newcastle then. Uh, I think it was one of them games. It was just a pretty standard sort of win. Like, it's, there's nothing extravagant that happened. United concede their customary goal. We can't defend as a team, you know. People will see that Newcastle go and blame Maguire. That's the ones that don't know about football, but it's cool. Um, so, yeah, so that was it, really. I mean, Newcastle were there for the taking. I mean, if you really put your foot down against Newcastle, you'll get chances. It's just about taking your chances. So it was one of those wins that were just pretty routine. Rashford was a re really good goal. His first goal was really good. Um, he's, he's much better coming off the left. I think he just needs to stay on the left. Um, Bruno got his goal. Um, Daniel James, you know, worked hard like he does. Won't give you nothing special, but got his his goal. So, yeah, overall, just pretty routine. There's not really not much to say about that game. It's just pretty routine. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I I did I just seen the highlights of the goals now. Um, that's obviously two and two for Daniel James. Who obviously scored in the Europa League as well for against Real Sociedad. Um, there's always there's always so much only so much we can really recap on the game. But the question on our agenda was today is. What is a successful season for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at this point? There's about 13 games left in the league, I think. Mm. Um, still in the Europa League, still in the FA Cup. So, you know, I mean, how are you originally feeling, coach? Because, you know, it's been a good week for United. Yeah, it's been decent, but I think he needs a trophy now. Because if he if he finishes second, yeah, well, Jose's done that already. So it's... it's, it's and, and Man City was way ahead when Jose done it. And Man City, to me, are way ahead now. So... It's nothing that we haven't seen before in recent years. Maybe the mood around the camp is a bit better. And when Jose finished second, that's about it. But apart from that, for me, a successful season is the trophy. Like we need, we need to win a trophy. I'm not down for this top four stuff because, you know, our owners won't spend the money like that anyway. So that's the what the top four is for. Oh, we're not going to win the Champions League next year. So for me, it's got to be a trophy for Oli right now for his next sort of development, whether it's Europa, whether it's FA Cup, whatever we can get. You know, we'll just kind of go from there, but definitely a trophy for Oli. Okay, fair enough. Boys, anything you want to add about Manchester United? I mean, it looks like they are going to be getting into the top four. Um, they're 10 points behind the leaders, uh, Manchester City, yes. Um, what will be made of them today if you manage to watch the game? And how far do you think Solskjaer can take this United side, considering he's probably taken them to a slightly upper level this season? Yeah, I think it's a decent game. Um... Scoreline maybe flattered United a bit because especially in the first half, Newcastle came out pretty strong, stronger than I expected. We saw, uh, what's his name, St. Maximan was getting me going all over the place and that. They weren't really that sort of clinical in the final third, but when you've got match winners in your team, guys like Rashford, who can you get me? Do those little bits and bobs uh, in those small places. Obviously, Bruno uh, in the final third. Or Bruno, Bruno's a bit anonymous today, scored a penalty, but yeah, man, I think United just really took, took their chances. If you look at it, when they were two, was it 2-0 up or 2-1 up? I think those were really the only clear-cut chances that they had. They didn't really create as much as some of the other games where they've been creating, man. Uh, as far as Oli, I think there is a lot of potential in this United team to take them. I think, again, it's a project you're looking at next season. What's a successful season? I can't answer that because I'm not a United fan. I think coach has summed it up, his opinion. For me, if they get top four... I think, yeah, Oli's Ollie's calm. Like, for me, even if he doesn't win the trophy, it's not time to start saying sack Oli, sack Oli, or none of that. So I think they get top four. Because, I mean, you could say Europa, but Europa top four, they get you the same result at the end. I mean, fair enough. Silverware, like, when you say, yeah, trophy, trophy, I always have this little running joke, ibs of joke, where I say there's a difference between a trophy and a trophy. Because Europa is like a HND. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where Champions League is a degree. You're not even going to put a HND on your CV. Like, especially a club like Man United, you, you want to H&D on your CV, people. You're not going to... Say again? 
You will try KHND on your CV. Oh, not me, but not me, my guy. You know what I'm saying? If you go in, you look like, because they started off in Champions League. If they, they were even in it this season, right? They dropped out. So I don't think them getting Europa, I don't think like real old school United fans, they're not going to be shouting, yeah, yeah, we won Europa, go to parade. So it's like, it doesn't make a difference to me. Top four or Europa, which they look like they're going to get top four, go again next season, improve on what you've done, maybe get one or two signings. That's, that's me from the outside looking in. I think you said it spot on as a so-called neutral. Nancy, um, yeah, I mean, for sure United are looking in a good way to be maintaining their Champions League um, top four spots. Very impressive against Sociedad. I did watch it a little bit. Um, and Sociedad are probably the most difficult non-seeded side United could have got. And I think they're fifth in La Liga and they were often, I think they were first for a moment before Atletico Madrid run through. But um, very impressive for United in that game on Thursday. And Shahab, Shahab. Can I just say, obviously, congrats to Shola Shortire, yeah, for getting his debut today um, and whatnot. So, you know... I know you're Ghanaian, yeah, but you're African. If you're going to say his name, say it correctly, not the... Angle. I'm not Nigerian, so you tell Shoretire. me. Shoretire. You're Shoretire, Shoretire, not Shortire. Don't what, say, that, say that again. Shoretire. Shoretire. See, there you go. I'm not Nigerian, so I don't know how to say no, that, they, second, they, they, that second name there. So, yeah, but just congratulations to him um, and whatnot. 17 years old. He's the one up and coming in our academy and whatnot. Hopefully, for his career, he gets to play number 10 and not just shifted out wide. Everybody else gets shifted when they come through the um, system or whatnot. But, yeah, just congrats to, late. congrats to him today, anyway. OK, fair enough. Yeah, I've obviously, I've heard you talk about him when we did the talents to watch out and two, three of my United mates for the, say the same thing about the guy. So, yeah, good for him. Um, yeah, we're going to move on. There was four games on Sunday. We'll go to the next one. At 4 30, it ended Arsenal nil, Manchester City won. Raheem Sterling in the second minute scored who, a header. Who? Raheem Sterling. Okay, cool. Why? What's the, okay, I'm just saying, cool. no, I'm just saying, there's certain guys on here just don't rate Sterling. Yeah, okay, some guys cool, don't rate Rashford. It's, it's all right, though. No, so, well, well, guys don't rate Rashford. Well, well, Look at the goals today. Did you see the, did you see the chances Sterling missed? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll let him talk about Arsenal first. And yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay, but it ended Arsenal nil, Manchester City won. Raheem Sterling in the second minute. Um, Few chances. I think City obviously had the best chances. Cancelo went close in the second half to put it to bed. Um, two Arsenal fans. Nessie obviously wants you to go first. Ibs, so what's your recap on the game and how do you feel as the game went on? I thought it was one of those games where the players just went into it expecting to get bad. Like, I just felt like they probably just went in there thinking, ah, oh, you know, City. Everyone's like, City are on fire, so you know it could be three or four. And on the on the first like two three minutes, it looked like it could have been seven or eight. If I'm honest, but then for some reason it felt like Arsenal grew into the game. But I don't know. There was a the pattern of play wasn't like connected. It felt disjointed at times. Like you get balls played into the final third, but it wasn't that cohesion amongst the front four to create chances. I thought Saka had a lot of the ball, but there was nothing more around him to make chances. Especially from the left hand side, there was a lot of crosses that Tierney was putting in, but it wasn't it was not going to any City dealt with it very easy. And then I thought from like the fortieth minute the game just died out. And the whole second half was just a, you know, it was just passive. It just sort of just passed by. And I thought it was just City just thought, okay, we won the up. Look, if Arsenal really come out, we could kill the game. And Cancelo could have killed it if I'm honest. It was just one of those games, you know, they just just passed by. Um I uh was a bit Weirded out with the starting lineup, if I'm honest, because I thought Saka didn't need to play today, if I'm being honest. Um, really? Okay. Because I, I mean, I get why people say, oh, he has to play, but I don't want to overplay him like they did with Jack Wilshire, one. And two, Thursday's a bigger game. So I'd rather him be fresh for that and not focus on a game where we weren't expected to win. It's a dead rubber. Like, it's not. It's not a game against Spurs or a game against a team around us. It was City. And for me, I'd just rather he rested a few more players. But it is what it is. I'm, 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 I'm OK with it, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know you said last week that you, you, you were expecting City to win. And the fact that the one line, one nil scoreline was probably not expected on the cards. No, it could have, could have gone a bit further. It, it just seemed like, to an extent, that I think I felt like Arsenal were probably fine or accepted the one nil defeat, obviously. Yeah, the, exactly. The scoreline, people say... Um, I don't know, man. I think Saka's Arsenal's best player. I do believe that. No, um, I do get that, but I don't think that you have to always play him. I feel like Thursday is a more important game. I'd rather have him fresh for Thursday because he's. Just, he, I swear he ain't missed a game. And yeah. he, when you're playing every three, four days, I, I know he's 19 in that, but Thursday is more important because we need to win that. 
I'm going to be more disappointed if we now go out on Thursday for this like for this game when players that shouldn't have played today played. I know Cedric didn't play, so I expect him to play in the, in, in the week. Louise will probably play in the week now. But, yeah, I'd rather have Saka not played. And done, or done what he did with some throwing to slant from the bench. We'll come on to um, the Champions League and Europa League predictions and the recap towards the end of the show. So we'll come on to our Benfica yeah. the Arsenal, what you think about it. Um, Ness, Nacy, um, I've seen your Twitter the last few days, bro, and uh, I've seen you really come on to Arteta. You've not been happy with him. Um, hmm. Up and down, of course, a good result against Leeds, didn't beat um, Villa, didn't beat Man City today, also lost the Wolves, which was a mad- madness for Arsenal. Um, and I've seen you talk about him just trusting too many of the the players who, who you just cannot trust, like David Luiz, like Willian. Um, but before you say all of the, your thoughts on Arsenal as a whole, what do you make of the game today? And you know, is there anything you want to add from what is yeah, said? So I think it's just another typical Arsenal performance this season in terms of the lack of quality. And my main, main concern, as you probably saw from my tweets right now with Arsenal, is let's see if we forget the results to one side. And even the performance of some aspect. But I am genuinely bored when I watch my team. And this is my biggest concern. I've not, I mean, I'm what, I'm 32 years old now. Started watching Arsenal from the, obviously, the Ian Wright era. So what's that, 95, 96? And I can't remember watching so many consistent games where it's just it's literally boring. City did not even get out of gear two today. They didn't have to try. Once they scored that early goal, like Ib said, I thought, yep, yeah, it's going to be 5, 6, 7 nil. Um, but they didn't even have to do that. And for us, it looked like it was just a damage limitation. And funny enough, defensively, after we scored that goal, our shape was actually fantastic. During the low block thing, City couldn't really, really get in, inside or they didn't clear anything clear clear until that later chance uh, that Ibs is mentioning from Cancelo that should have probably sealed the game and make it 2-0. Mares was just having fun. He was just doing what he liked on that... Um, on that right wing. Obviously, if they had a better left winger, we saw Sterling scored the header, but his other chances when he was in the box, the easier one, like he always gets his feet muddled up. If they had a proper left winger, then it would have probably been about three or four nil. You understand what I'm saying? But overall, I'm not actually, in a, in a funny way, like I, I watched the performance, although it was boring, I was like, okay, at least, and it's sad to say that, like at least we didn't get battered. But at the same time, that's the level that we are right now. Like everyone's saying um, transition, whatever. I think it's deeper than a transition. It's for the first time, I think last week or two weeks ago, I was very happy to hear him say and acknowledge we're a mid-table team. So it shows now a lot of Arsenal fans are really waking up and understanding this is it. This is where we are. Now, let's come on to the Arteta thing. And I need to make it clear because people think that I'm so anti-Arteta and it's, it's not even necessarily that. What it stems from is at the start of the season, so many Arsenal fans were so positive that this guy was just going to come in waving a magic wand and it was going to change because he was giving fancy press conferences and this and that. A lot of people, they fall for gas in football. People that talk too much. People that come in waffle. He's got his nice slick hair. Where's his McQueen's? Guess what? You give a bad workman. I know they say a bad workman blames his tools. But hang on a second. If you have a chainsaw and I have a butter knife, who's going to cut the tree faster? There is a lot of work needed in Arsenal. So for all of these guys to just have this big delusion that, oh, Arteta was going to come in and he was going to... That's my frustration. And that's where I trolled them with all of this, oh, trust the process and all of these nonsense hashtags they were using. We can see what he's doing. We can see... Where is the improvement? We are boring. We are so, so boring. I mean, if you if you can see it differently or anyone has anything to counteract that, I'll be very, very interested in it. When but you're that ready. Is my main, that is my yeah, main... Yeah, when you're ready. ...contention with Arsenal <laughs> right now is, is just boring. I'm, I was speaking to, to a very good friend of mine, um, Nesco, who's a big Arsenal fan, and I, I said to him, my, my views as a neutral, so-called neutral, I think this is Arteta's first management role. He's obviously been a coach at Man City and done a great job or whatever. And I think he's coming straight away. He steadied the ship for a bit, won a trophy, which is obviously great. And I think he's also realised this season that this is Arsenal Football Club. This is a big club. Certainly the top three biggest clubs in this country. It's not easy. And I think with, the, with this lack of experience, it has made his job a little bit difficult. Um, I feel like what he needs to do is make sure that he's somehow playing in the Champions League next season. I think this season, because he's not going to get it, let's be realistic now, I think next season, because you've had likes of Klopp and Solskjaer and Lampard even managed to get into the Champions League, I think that's his next step. Whether he can do it, we'll see. 
Now, obviously, I've heard Coach and Ib say when you're ready and what you think is so um, appeasing about Arteta. Coach, do you actually want to add on to or respond to what you think Nesco was saying then? I mean, if anyone can't see that Arsenal has improved, then I don't know, personally. I mean, as an Arsenal fan, I get what Nacy's saying in terms of um, not being entertained. Like, come on, man, look at the Arsenal teams they've grew up watching. I mean, <laughs> the level has been high over the years in terms of entertainment. Even Wenger's four days and whatnot, there's been entertainment there. Cool. If entertainment is what you're looking for, then cool. I get why people have got a gripe with, with Arteta. Me, I can clearly see, like, even today's performance, just looking at it with my coach's hat on, I'm looking at it, I'm like, Arteta's the only man, even though they lost today, that actually stifled that whole Cancelo thing in the middle. All these teams have been leaving at their winger on the wing, letting Cancelo come in there, outnumber the other team four to three, and they just keep possession. Arteta is the only man that I see said, yo, Saka, if Cancelo goes in there, you're going to follow him, yeah? So if they want to play 4v3 over there, it's not going to happen today. It's going to be 4v4. And then, yes, they have the quality. They obviously they have the quality over Arsenal, but those little things let me know that with Arteta, if you back him, this is the thing. I said it before and I'll say it again. If Arsenal are not careful, yeah, this will be work experience for Arteta and he will just take over the Man City reigns afterwards. Back this guy. This guy knows what he's doing. If you give him a little bit of backing, he's already shown you yeah, what he can do to me. Like, yes, entertainment-wise, he needs to get up there. So I agree with Nacy, yeah, if you're talking about entertainment, but... In terms of building something, because don't forget, he's building something from scratch right now. How Arsenal have been terribly run over the last years, he's building everything from scratch right now. And I can see that the players are following, the players believe in him and whatnot. And that's the first thing that you need. You need your dressing room to believe in you. And I look at those players and they believe in what he's doing and stuff like that. Even the way he's handled certain situations at the club and whatnot, he's handling it with class. But for me, tactically, he knows the game. He knows what he's doing. Today, it was a classic example of Man City just have better players than Arsenal. doesn't matter what Arsenal is going to do. They just have better players. They have more experienced players. They have more wiser players. They have more intelligent players. So for me, Arteta, the whole thing that he's done, I'm not saying he's a finished article. No way. He's got to improve as well, just like every other manager. But the little things I'm seeing with my coach's hat on in terms of watching Arteta, how he sets up against different teams and this, that and the other, with the quality of players he had... Shahab, you just said you think Saka is their best player. Saka, yes, he's a young kid, but he should be no one's best player at 19 at, at, at a top club. But that's where that's the state Arsenal are in right now. And that's what Arteta has to work with. He has to work from scratch. As Saka is my best player, I need to build players around other players that are young. That's what he's got to do. So for me, all in all, entertainment-wise, agree with Nacy. All round, I think Arteta is the man for Arsenal right now in the position that they're in. Definitely. Anything you'd like to respond to? You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said that um, you're seeing the improvements. Uh, can you tell me categorically what those improvements are and how they've translated on the pitch? For me, uh, I you think, like, like, I said, like you said today, like you said today. No, not today, not today, because we're in the Okay, season. no, I'm using an example. I'm using, oh. I'm using no, today. No, 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 George, don't use an example. No, 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 I'm, I'm going to, I can't explain my point if but I don't You're not going to answer the question, George. If you're yeah, not going to answer, gonna answer the question, yeah, 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 this, yeah, is, this is what I'm saying. He wants me, he wants me to just say something without thinking. I just want the question answered, bro. So I'm saying to you, I'm using, I'm using, Shahab, I'm using today as an example. If he doesn't want I'm using today. Okay, then, but we're not talking about what today, did Nacy say? What did Nacy say today? He's not talking about today. Nacy said, when, said we when we went one nil down, when we went one nil down, I thought it was just going to be six or seven. That's what Nacy said today. Yeah, it wasn't six or seven. The reason why it wasn't six or seven because it wasn't a great defensive display or anything like that. But the, if you watch the tactical game be going on between Arteta and Pep, you can see the clear difference was the quality of players. Not necessarily the tactics. We all know that. We all know that. Of players all over. Yeah. Since he's come, since he's come into the club, you can clearly see, you can clearly see everything is more stable right now. It's not all over the place. With Emery, people are talking about results, this and this, that. And even Emery got a better percentage. Of, listen, it wasn't stable with Emery at any time. It was never stable. No. Emery wanted Zaha, you want to go and get Pepe. Em Emery wants this player, you want to go and sign that player. It's not stable. Right now, we can clearly see at Arsenal, is stable. Edu, stable. Arteta, stable. Everybody knows the chain of command at Arsenal. It's not three or four people deciding on one player to buy and stuff like that. So to me, the biggest thing at Arsenal right now, there's more stability at the club. And that, that's where you start with your foundation. You need stability. If there's no stability, 
there's, there's no point of us talking about buying players and this, that, and the other. So that's my biggest thing for Arteta. He's brought stability to the club where they need it most right now. But Ibs will know more than me because I'm not a supporter, so... Yeah, look, I'm just going to move on. And guys, let me know if you believe Nesco is correct or coaches is correct. Um, two different opinions and coaches speaking. I'm, even, I'm debating what I'm talking about. He thinks it's about Arteta, so there's no point. Let's move on. Right, OK. So the question on the agenda um, before we quickly move on to the, the next game was... Um, what does it say? Could no Europe for Arsenal next year be a blessing in disguise? So, Ibs, what do you think about that question? And if I asked you, would it be a blessing in disguise for Arsenal then? It's what, you know, six and a half, one a dozen sort of sort of thing, isn't it? Where you think, oh, OK, no Europe means one game a week. Because the likelihood is if you went out of both cup competitions at the first stage, you know, the maximum games would fail be 40. At that point, it's a game a week, yeah? If you go into a league with a game where you've got so much freshness in your players to be able to say, okay, cool, we have to get up for every Prem game, fine. There's no more cup, cool. The only downside to that is there's no Europe. And a lot of players will either want to come to a club for it or not. Um, it might help Arsenal. It might help Arteta's transition to, you know, say, okay, I can concentrate on these players and I have them more training. There'll be more training. So he has a lot more time to spend on tactics and stuff like that. It could end up like that this season, if I'm honest. Arsenal 10th. And if they don't win Europa, that's where it's going to happen. So if it does happen, the thing is, I said to Nacy as well, and I said it to uh, Lloyd, who's previously been on the show, Arsenal need to kick on next season. It doesn't matter what happens. They need to kick on. So if they are in a sequence where it is no Europe football, if I don't see Arsenal hitting top four, questions will have to be asked. You can't, you can't have a 38-game season maximum 46 if you go through Cups and not be hitting top four with the squad Arsenal have. I know it's not the best, but individually Arsenal's got good players who are game changers. So for me, it could be beneficial. It could actually help Arsenal, if I'm honest. I, I'm going to think of um, previous occasion when it's happened to clubs. Now, I know t- twice it's happened to Liverpool where we've not been in Europe. One of them, we finished second and the other yep. one, we managed to finish fourth just. And Chelsea it was another one where they finished 10th one season. They didn't have Europe and they won the league. So I yep. played to them. I think it does help, like you said, just purely to freshness and, and all of that stuff. But I think also the flip side of it, people would say, then it ruins kind of the rhythm of the, of the game. So I think with City, certainly with them, the fact that they played two games in four days, Liverpool as well, whatever, it can ruin often the rhythm. But I think freshness is key. But I, can um, I counter that? Sorry. I think with the City thing, it shows today. He took... So from their game in midweek against Everton, there was no Gundogan and no De Bruyne. He had Foden and Jesus, yeah? He just swapped. If Arsenal now say, OK, no Bamiyang and no uh, Smith Rowe, who have we brought in? We've brought in Lacazette and William or Pepe. The difference in quality, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's, that's the difference. So City can do that. He can drop Diaz or Stones and put in Laporte. He okay. can take out Walker and put in Cancelo. Even Zinchenko is just leaving Mendy in the stands, bro. Like it's the, so that's where I think the quality is sick. But for Arsenal... A game a week allows a Bamiang or Saka or whoever to just say, okay, cool, I can just... Like, I'd expect a Bamiang to hit 20-plus goals. Clean. I'd expect Saka to have double win assist because you should be getting into these games thinking, I am fresh, we should beat a lot of teams. I think it would be quite beneficial for Arsenal. The only flip side is if it doesn't, the question needs to be asked to the manager, these players, the guys at the top, because I will be calling for heads. And I've never done that before. I am Arteta's biggest fan. Yeah, I'll argue to the day right now. But if Arsenal are not in a position where you are top four next season because of not having no Europe, we've got to, you've got to treat Arteta like Lampard, bro. I'm not even joking. No, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you that one. I think, as I was saying, you know, I, I think the managers who are trying to get into the Champions League, they've managed to do it in a, in a first full season. OK, with Arteta, you can understand because his mm. team is not as good as the other teams that I've been mentioning in terms of squads and yeah, starting 11s. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree with you. And uh, yeah, I mean, Nesco, you're going to wrap this up then on Arsenal quickly. Um, we should have spoken about Man City, but we're running out of time. Um, yeah, do you think it'll be a blessing in disguise for Arsenal if, if you're not in Europe? Play, like you said, you gave some good examples there. It could be, but again, I don't know. The cynic in always me just looks at it. It's, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it, could, it could be a reach as well because you look at Leicester. They're in, they're in Europe. They're sec- sitting second. So I don't know, man. It could be. It's, it's, it's hard to pinpoint. I think... Let's do in Europe. Oh, say again? Europa League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do they play? Slavia Prague. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, man. I don't think like I think if you look at the way our results have gone and the kind of football we've played today, I don't think Europe has had an impact in it. I mean, for the whole of January, you don't play any European football. And we were just get me, la di da, win one, draw one, lose but two. I feel like but I feel like to that result. I don't think mm, go I feel like results are commonly with Arsenal where you're gonna get up and down. Like mm. for instance, I think but would you say but would you say you do you believe in your heart? You, Europe had an impact on that. Honestly. No, no, no. I think yeah, personally, point. I don't. I personally think right now Arsenal have got better defensively in the sense that we conceded less goals, but for some reason that has just killed our attack because we've only scored thirty-one in the Prem. So as much as we've let in the sec- second or third least goals in the Prem as a team, which is brilliant, have we? Yeah, only Chelsea and Man City have conceded less. Arsenal going forward is thirty-one goals. That is poor return. So. I don't know what's going on, but if he, as coach said, if he gets backed in the summer and we're not in Europe and he can buy players who want to come to a club who ain't in Europe and they're good enough and they improve our first 11, not the squad, the first 11, then there's no reason why Arsenal can't like, have a good season next year. Yeah. Okay. Going to move on then. Um, I just want to say on oh, City, I mean, what a delight they've been to, be, to watch, honestly. Um, I, I can't take, I, I don't want to. Just, just stand biased because I'm a Liverpool supporter, but this is a fantastic football team right now who are actually the best in Europe by far. Um, I think the Champions League sometimes when you play however many games to win that competition can be a bit of an unfair reflection and especially this season, but this is the best team in Europe by far. Are they you better by Munich? Yes, I've watched Bayern yeah, Munich. Yeah, they are defensively. Team. Bayern Munich letting too many goals, man. Yeah, too many goals. They lost for that yesterday. league as well. That standard of league as well, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Good thing you mentioned that. Um, they lost two one yesterday to Frankfurt. Yeah, they did, Ibs, and then they drew three three in a week. Three yeah, three yeah, against. Yeah. yeah, so they are struggling. I think by yeah, far. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's a delight to watch them. Cancelo, Gundogan, Sterling. Um, Bernardo, I think Bernardo. I think what he's done with Cancelo is uh, brilliant as coach that he brings yeah. him inside. But I think what Arteta uh, said something in his pretty much uh, interview today that Pep's always wanted to get to a point where he has no striker. And I think he's achieved that now. The way they play with no striker. And that's why Aguero probably will just get the five appearance to get his Premier medal. And that'll be it. I think yeah. he's worth it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, City, 10 points, clear on top of the table. Um, so, yeah, they won the game by a goal to nil. They will play Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Champions League, which we'll come on to at the end of the show. Right then, uh, two more games to talk about. Well, we're going to be talking about one. Uh, West Ham United beat Tottenham Hotspur by two goals to one. Mikhail Antonio and Jesse Lingard. Wow, what a rival he's been to West Ham United. Lucas Moura pulled one back and Spurs hit the woodwork twice after 2-1, but they could not salvage a point. West Ham United move into the top four. And um, they are flying high. They really are. Um, so, yeah, boys, if you guys did watch the game, what do, you, what, what do you make of that game then? West Ham in the top four. Tottenham, again, struggling to win. Um, yeah, what's your guys' thoughts on, on the game then? It's a good result for West Ham. Brilliant result. They're flying. They're having that season they had where Payet was doing well. But I think there's a better cohesion with the team now than they probably had back then. Um, they've just got to keep playing. They've just, just got to keep... They're, they're in the game where it's once a week. Do you know what I mean? So for them, it's we just have to get up for that one game. Let's, Moyes has them in the training ground and probably do doggies and, you know, like laps. And he probably has them fitness-wise, like to a T, he probably has them up there. So, and for some reason, Lingard's playing well. He's been a great acquisition for them. And yeah, West Ham are doing well. I think for them, minimum is Europa League right now. That's what their mentality probably is. Like, if we can get in Europa League, that's a great season for them. If they don't want to drop out, it'd probably be quite disappointing. Um, they haven't got superstars. They've got a team, which is quite good. Um, and they've got a manager who's quite... who for, for me, a manager who's probably not had the best of time since United. You know, he's probably out here to prove himself that he's still a top manager or a good manager. So for him, this is probably quite, you know, pleasing. I mean, I'm shocked how well David, David Moyes is doing. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think he could come back from when he was at United and Sunderland. Mm. Um and we have seen him finish fourth before with Everton, and we have also seen him for, for, um, play in Europe with Everton as well. But he's done a fantastic job. There's so many good players at West Ham as well. I really like Sochek, Bowen, Ben Rama, Antonio is such a handful. They've got good defenders as well. Uh, just a really good side. But um, yeah, we're gonna we should talk about Tottenham. They've lost again. Um, really struggling, really struggling. But they already came into life when they were two on uh, down. They hit the woodwork twice. 
So, Coach and Nesco, I mean, what are you guys thinking about Tottenham now? Because it's becoming worse and worse. The side who were top after 15 games are now eighth or ninth. They're only about two points behind. You guys, Nesco, only, you know, which probably, no respect to you guys, has just showed how bad Tottenham have fallen off. I mean, yeah, where's it all going wrong for Tottenham and why can't they win a big um, game of football? I didn't watch the, the game today. I saw the highlights. Um... I wanted to talk more on West Ham, really, and just say, first of all, I don't think they're going to maintain that fourth position. Obviously, we know this uh, season has been a topsy-turvy one. Uh, for Spurs, I think it's just a mix of getting exposed with the way that they've been playing. When you've got an anti-football manager uh, and that they doesn't want to move through the times, for example, when you had Wenger in his 0-4 time and then the young bucks started coming in and changing, I think a bit of ha that's happening to Jose Mourinho now, boy. He's getting exposed. He's getting to a time where, boy, can he compete with these new young managers who are, you understand, hip to the new game? He still wants to do his old-fashioned his old fashioned uh, kind of stuff. Uh, it's all about, yeah, your attitude, being an arsehole. They say that, yeah, that's going to work for you in some games, but sometimes you actually have to play football, mate. Today, if I'm honest, from what I saw from the highlights, Spurs are actually just unlucky in that game. Like you said, they hit to the post uh, two times at the end. Uh, but again, that's just me watching the highlights. It looks, it looked like it was a bit of fortune more on West Ham side. And again, like we've seen, it's a topsy turvy season. So I think they'll probably still sneak in a European spot just because of the quality they've got. But they might have blown top four now because of the teams ahead of them. I just look at the stats quickly before I come on to coach. Twenty shots and goal from Tottenham, and only four from West Ham. I didn't watch all of it myself, but um, to turn it on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if they continue to uh, create chances like that and just build, build themselves forward. I'm just looking at the next three games for Tottenham, and I think they're massive for for their hopes for top four. It's not over yet, like you were saying. You don't believe West Ham can maintain that position. They've got Burnley at home next, then Fulham away, then Palace at home before the big um, North London derby on the 14th of March. So it's crunch time for Tottenham. They need to start picking up points. They did beat Wolfsburger. Don't know who that is. Four-one in the Europa League. So, um, yeah, Coach, anything you would like to add on either one of these two teams? Well, I just, obviously, West Ham, I agree with Macy. Um, I think that bubble might burst. Um, in terms of Spurs, the biggest game of their season is the Carling Cup final. It's as simple as that. If Jose wins that, it's a successful season. No one can't say anything. If he loses that, he's on the clock. It's as simple as that. From next season, from the first game on, the next season, he's on the clock. That's the only way the majority of Spurs fans will say, you know what? Okay, that's why we made the change. Yeah, if we if we if we end up winning that trophy, I, I, unfortunately for them, they're playing the best team in Europe in that in that final. So therefore, they're gonna have to play the games of their life in that game. But if they win that, it's been a, it's been a decent season for them. If they lose that, well, well, like I said, the time will be Jose will be on the clock by next season. Will be on the clock because the Spurs fans, if they get back into that stadium as well, they're not gonna have it. They're just not gonna have it. So. You know, right now, they might not be having it right now and be patient waiting for that final if they were in the stadium right now. So, for me, yeah, that is the Carlin Cup final for him. Yeah, OK, fair enough. I just want to say, I know that you guys are not being disrespectful, but to, to say that they won't maintain the top four spaces, but I, I just have to give big props to West Ham United. I mean, a few times I've watched them and they've looked really good and they've got some good players and... Jesse Lingard somehow has burst into life. I know he's had a tough time with one of his parents dying. Um, but um, yeah, it's just come through and, and it's become a, an extra push for West Ham United. So yeah, that's just that's Jesse's level though. That's Lingard's level. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, I won't disagree with that. But yeah, yeah fair, definitely he, he's he's coming to life for West Ham. And yeah, time will tell for the Hammers. Okay, so I did want to speak about it quickly. I just want to say Leicester beat Aston Villa by two goals to one away from home. That is another team in the top four. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say Leicester are very impressive. I, I know they've lost a few times at home. In fact, I actually read something that Brendan Rodgers has been blaming the pitch at Leicester. He feels like the turf is not great, that hence why uh, he's not been winning games at home. Now, obviously, <laughs> you make what, whatever you want to say with that. But um, yeah, I've got to say, I watched Leicester today briefly uh, for, for the first half. A really good side. Uh, I know they're playing in Europe and I know what Brendan Rodgers is like in Europe. Not very good, but yeah, he was nil-nil against Slavia Prague. Leicester, fantastic. And I just wanted to ask you guys quickly, just a yes or no answer. Does anyone believe that Leicester will be in the top four and be playing Champions League football ne next season? 
Of if you ask him, is it as it stands right now? Yes, I think it's. I think it's a safe yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, they're nine points in front of Liverpool, who I feel will have that. Like, them and Chelsea are the ones who will have like a late push. Even Everton, but I feel like they might just have enough to to sneak in there. Even Everton, I thought Everton were just hype. Ibs. They are hype, but they've got a game in hand. They're still hype, but they've got a game in hand. I, I mean, I mean, yeah, Liverpool. I mean, Everton won. I don't you know. I'm not even going to get to it. Everton are hype, and let me just leave it there. They're a hype club. They're there. But yeah, uh, Leicester will get there for me, Charles. Yeah, I'll say right. no. You don't reckon they'll make it? Wow, there's a lot of games they're gonna have to lose. Yeah, I'll say no. I'll say no. Okay, cool, fair enough. Um, I think closer towards the when they, when we play a few more games, I would like to ask you guys again, and or Dan or whoever's on the show, Ibs, uh, sorry, Kev, um, who do you think would be in the top four? So, yeah, interesting. I just wanted to give props to Leicester City as well and Brendan Rodgers, who's done fantastic. And um, yeah, really, that's that's all. So we're going to come on to the Merseyside derby in a second because this is a new low for me. But before I do that, um, the question that was coming to the agenda today was in the game between Southampton and Chelsea, which ended 1-1, Takimi Minamino, my boy, scored, and then Mason Mount scored from the penalty spot. But it was the comments from Thomas Tuchel about Callum Hudson-Odoi, mm-hmm. who subbed him on at halftime and then took him off after 25 minutes. I don't. No, why is why your face like that, bro? Um, like what? <laughs> what? What kind of, bro? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to find the full quotes from Thomas Tuchel, but he took him off. He said he was not happy with his attitude and his energy, um, and he didn't press and I didn't or whatever. I didn't. I, I remember the first two parts. He did say he was not happy with his attitude and and his press. Um, boys, you're gonna have to talk to me about that one. I mean, I'll go first. Yeah, go on. So, um, I personally feel that um, Callum can only do one thing, really. And that's just knuckle down. Because you're not going to win either way with these sort of comments. You're not going to win. He's a fresh manager, so he's not going anywhere. That's number one. Yeah, he has. He's, he's, he, play, he came out and said he has been playing Callum most of the games, which he has. So, you can't just blow your lid all, over this um, and whatnot. Plus, even if Callum does get sulky or whatever it is, doesn't like the comments and that, you're basically going to play into what Thomas Tuchel just said about you, as in your attitude's bad. So he's really only got one thing to do, and that's get his head down and try and get into the team for the next match and whatnot. That's all he can do. Me, personally, I think it was a bit half and half. I think it was Tuchel just saying, listen, you weren't doing what I asked you to do when you came up, because he took Tammy off as well at half time, I believe. So, And I think he's also sending a message out there. I, I haven't got time to waste with guys. Yeah, we've got too much talent in the squad to be wasted with, guys. If I give you an instruction and you don't do it from the start, Tammy, you'll come off. If you don't do it when I sub you on, Callum, you'll come off. So I think it's a bit of half and half there in terms of Callum probably wasn't following the instructions that he wanted to do as in pressing off the ball and stuff like that. And 50% was showing the rest of the squad and whatnot. Because it's easy to take Callum and Tammy off. It's always easy to take those academy players off. You can't, you know, it's not going to just whisk off Werner. Because Werner's been told that, oh, he's one of the guys that got Lampard sacked and this and that. And now if you whisk him off, it's like, okay, Werner's a, it's a bad boy. So for me, Tuchel, he's put it out there. Callum just needs to get his head down, get in, get in the team again. He's been playing most of the minutes for Tuchel since he came in. So that's all he can do. He can't do anything else. Yeah, I'm not sure what Thomas Tuchel's experience is like with, you know, when he does that sort of thing. I, I, I don't know where it was, who it was with PSG that he annoyed I know it's more so of the board. Yeah. Um, I, I, listen, I think if you sub someone on and then you sub someone off, for me, I just, it's not a good look. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's never a good look. And yes, I, I hear where you're coming from, coach, but I just think it was unnecessary. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, Chelsea fans can probably tell me. I thought it wasn't a great game when I watched them against Southampton, but to take him off like that, it's... I remember last... Well, there, was, season, there was no Chelsea fan, Shahab, that I saw online... Or guys that I know that were saying, oh, he was that bad that he deserved to get taken off. That like everybody was kind of just shocked. That's why fifty yeah. percent of two children just putting that that line out there. If you're not going to work hard, you're not going to do this. This is what's going to happen. This is the repercussions. And I'm only on an eighteen month deal, guys. So I'm not here, you know, for the foreseeable future. I need to get the results now. So that's that's just what it is. Well, I remember two seasons ago, I think it was that Duncan Ferguson when he was assistant manager at uh, Everton and he took off Moyes Keane against United, I think it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that never run well. I mean, anyways, Duncan Ferguson, I fucking hate the guy. But yeah, um, Ibs and Nesco, 
quickly, do you want to add anything? Uh, if I don't know why Nesco was asking you why, why are you looking like that. I'm, I'm assuming it's no rate, Callum. That's why. No, do you know what it is? <laughs> no, because we have this argument all the time, me and Nacy, about Saka and Callum and whatnot. For me, his move to Bayern didn't go through. And I thought that that would have been really good for him, development wise, to go abroad. I thought a lot of English players don't go abroad and they should. I thought if he'd gone Bayern, maybe I don't know if that's Chelsea not letting him go, him not wanting to go, I don't know the ins and outs. If he'd gone, it'd have been better for his development. I feel like if he doesn't knuckle down, he's just going to get left behind. There's a lot of players in his positions right now who are really starting to show their, you know, their worth. And he needs to say, okay, cool. I need to get in that Chelsea team and do what I do because Saka's getting on and you got, I'm not saying Greenwood's there, but you know, you've got these players who are around the same age who are really playing for their teams. He shouldn't get hooked. I thought that was a bit bad. And I think hooking players you put on is just embarrassing, isn't it? Because I was, it's a confidence dent that like you could dent someone's confidence. So as coach, he's got one thing to do in that for that. Because if he now goes in a slump, too short to say, we'll see. There you go. Like yeah. and and them German managers, they don't play in it. They 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 are very much like straight and narrow. So he has to knuckle down and not get left behind. Because in that position, he's better than Reece James as a wing back. Because you want your wing back to go forward. But yeah, that's my thing. And he has to not get left behind by the players around him. Yeah, I, th- I think um, I-, I think Hudson Odoi should be in the Chelsea starting lineup if they're playing wingers. I know that they're playing wing backs now, but he's definitely their best winger for me. I mean, he's just a really good player, always sharp, got a point to prove. Over Pulisic, I forget Pulisic, but uh, he's not played well this season though. No, no, and, and I'm just asking because last season Pulisic was the guy, and now uh, this season I, I haven't heard anything once. Yeah, he's played poor. I think, I mean, when if he's on form, he would have, I would probably play Pulisic, Hudson Odoi, and whoever they want to play up front. But I'm not a Chelsea fan. And uh, Abraham, Tammy Abraham, Tammy Abraham, yeah, Tammy, yeah, the right one, yeah, the right one. We have Dan here. I think it'll be interesting to ask him and, and see what he thinks. Right then, boy, the Merseyside derby time. Liverpool <laughs> have lost to Everton by two goals to nil at home. It was their first loss at home against Everton since 1999. I am 22 years of old and it's the first time that Everton have ever beaten Liverpool in my lifetime at Anfield. Um, this is a new low for me, so I'm going to let you guys speak. I'm going to speak nah, afterwards. Nah, nah, nah. Can I go first? Goal, no, no, all I'm going to ask you guys is what did you guys think of the game? Um, the performance, Everton, and then I'm going to speak. So, yeah, Ibs, go ahead. I felt like it's one of those games where Everton were just going to win. I don't even know why. It wasn't that their performance was going to be great. It wasn't that they were going to go there and, you know, it was just early goal, they sat back. And then that penalty, you know, for me, I'm just going to say it now. It wasn't a pen for me personally, but it got given. And then as soon as they got that, that the game was done. Like in the 70th minute, Everton were lumping the ball into the corner for like, like they They just wanted the game to end. They were happy with a 1-0. Liverpool, I don't know anymore. I'm being deadly serious. I don't know what's the issue. Um, it's sad to see. Uh, but then again, at the flip side, like I've got Liverpool friends and to see them going through the motions is you know, quite hilarious um, at the same time. I think this has probably been one of the worst premiership title defences ever. Oof. Um, Oof. I'm not saying that in a bad way because it's up there with Leicester and Chelsea. Yeah, but it what is, about City's it, last year? But City never fell off like this. It is I, the reason why I say it is because Liverpool was so good to see them now in a, such a state. Yes, injuries have come. I know you want to say that, Shahab, and I can see in your face that you want to say it. But the fall of how they have has been very damaging. But I don't think it's it's a cause for concern where people should now say like I heard on a radio yesterday someone said get rid of Klopp, get Doug Leach in the summer. Oh, my goodness. And then, and then bring in Gerrard. Like, for me, that's just... Yeah, 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 yeah it's embarrassing. Gerrard will do nothing. He's won oh. the league in Rangers. My mum can win the league in, Ra- in Scotland. Do you know what I mean? It's, I just feel like Liverpool fell off bad, but it's not a cause for concern because next season, I would still say they're one of the favourites for the title if they invest well and with the players coming back from injury. Now nah, they've got Henderson injured. I don't know how long he's out for. And it's just piling up and... I don't know. Maybe one of the front three just needs to be shifted. Maybe they need to just try something new. Because when you put the same team out constantly, you're just going to get the same results. Maybe he needs to just change it up for the next couple of weeks and not let this turn into one of those rots where you just keep losing and that. But Everton are happy. 
yeah, they got the result. They're a hype team, but they got the result. Ancelotti's like, you know, for me, a good manager. And I was quite surprised that Everton that were able to get him. But they're reaping the benefits now. So, yeah. Um, for me, in terms of the game, it's more what Ibs said, to be fair. It just it just felt like Everton weren't going to lose. That's that's what it felt like to me. And and what's happened with Liverpool, the spine is affected um, badly right now. And when your spine is affected in the football team, there's, there's only one way, and that's down. Um, second, obviously, you've got the injuries and whatnot. But for me, the front three are just not making good decisions. Like, that's, that's just, for me, the front three are not making good decisions up there. Like, Liverpool are getting the ball up there, but it's not sharp in there. Like, it's, it's not, you know... And I feel like they're taking extra touches. Yeah, so they have to overthink. For them right now, they're going back to the old Liverpool times of clock where they got to score three to just make sure that they win the game. And they're not scoring. So that's the problem. Like, they're not scoring either. So they're not paping over in the cracks. But for me, Shahab, in terms of Liverpool... Um, I've said this about Klopp before, and I remember his assistant saying it, saying that we stick to one philosophy, this, this. He, I think Klopp has a, it's a big failure of him sometimes to adapt to situations. He keeps playing the same way every single time, no matter what players he has. And I get the belief in your philosophy in that, but you don't have the players to do it for me. Like say for instance, Pep Guardiola, he's seen that his team's come a bit predictable with the 4 3 3. So, what's he going to do? He's going to put um, Cancelo in there to kind of mix it up to control the middle of the midfield. So, he's going to put his full back in there just to change things up a little bit. So, when they attack, they're playing 3 5 2 from what I can see with their yeah. two and stuff like that. And when they defend, they're playing 4 3 3. So, it's adapting to the times and the situation. For me, Klopp, when he hits the ceiling, he looks like he's just still banging his head against the ceiling. That's what I feel. Like he's not adapting to the situation of his tactics or Whatnot. And this is where managers really earn their buck, really, is when things are going bad and you're that top manager, can you adapt your tactics a certain way? We know about the centre-backs already. We don't need to talk about the centre-backs, but can you adapt it in a way where you can... I don't know. I just feel Klopp just keeps doing the same thing over and over again. But I feel like if you followed Klopp's career, the same thing happened at Dortmund. They did so well at Dortmund, but then they gassed. If you play like that for two, three years, the intensity is going to hit a ceiling. And then after Dortmund, they fed off. And the same thing is happening at Liverpool. He needs to just, for me, change it up a bit with the players. Maybe start Origi. Like, even Minamino's playing well. Like, no, I know you're going to shake your head, but Minamino's playing well now. Like, he could have been given a chance over Origi and Shaqiri, even Oxley chamberlain who are playing. I just feel like the same thing happened at Dortmund. If people know his career, he was doing really well, then they hit a wall, and then that was it. He can't hit that wall at Liverpool. He needs yeah, to did just they, did they hit a wall change at it up. Dortmund? Or what well, the problem at Dortmund was they kept giving their best player to Bayern Munich. Every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too, obviously. But but they won the league and they were really good. But then they hit, yeah, they sold players. But for me, he's just his way of playing is, you know, that fucking rock music. You know what I mean? It's just intense, intense. Mm. So I don't know, but that's my thing. I just feel like he needs to just freshen up a bit. But I think they're gonna be fine. Liverpool will be fine. Yeah. Just to latch onto the back of what these two said, I don't know. I tuned in about the 30, 40 minute mark, and all I saw was. Henderson getting injured, and I see some centre back called Oslan Tabak or something like that, and there's some next Nat Phillips coming. I said, "What kind of partnership is this?" And I just said, "Yeah, this is looking bleak." But again, I think George made a very good point about the um, the front three in the in the in the in the final but in the final third year. And guess what? It's not just this season. That is a running theme, you know. There's a lot of times where Mane and Salah, like I don't know, we don't both know their work. We all know their world class players. But there's times where I don't know if it's arrogance, if it's greed, where there's just a slight disjointment in there where it's that like Salah is so annoying. We all know his guy's ability, but he won't just get his head up. And it looks like when Mane's doing it, it's like, I don't know if it's a vengeance thing or something. Firmino, he'll be in front of the goal. Instead of this guy to shoot, he wants to put, like, there is that, they've had that little disjointment there going on, but they've managed to get away with it, obviously, because, yeah, they've scored mad goals and whatnot. But that thing that George identified, is actually been a running theme. It's not new. But now it looks like this season, it's been a lot worse. Where in the final third, they're making some silly decisions, taking extra touches, not making the right passes, not getting their head up, shooting when they should pass, passing when they should shoot. Of course, that's going to have an impact on your game, for sure. So Liverpool are driving a car with no insurance right now. That's just what it is. <laughs> and it's oh, coach, man, your, your analogies, man. They're just, <laughs> ah, yeah, that's enough. Well, well said. Um, yeah, well, coach and Nesco... You are right. I actually read something 
uh, on Twitter, which I probably should put down <laughs> and log off, um, that it is true. I mean, the system, there's only one way that clock can really go and he's taken a while to get it going. And yes, it's worked. And obviously we are the team where we are and, and, and what we've achieved. He doesn't have the ability to do that with the players and that is correct and it is hurting him. However, if there's one man to get us out of this mess, there's only one person that can do it and that's Jurgen Klopp and that's facts. So I just want to say that about Jurgen Klopp as it is. Um, Ozlan Talak. <laughs> no, it's Ozan Kabak. Yeah, um, he really struggled yesterday. 19-year-old <laughs> coming in. Um, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at me. The wind was crazy yesterday at a point. I mean, if you guys were watching it, it was absolutely crazy towards the Anfield Road end. Not come on, Shahab, come on. No, 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 hold on. Wind, come on. No, 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 no. Klopp has made... He sound like, like Ty now. Come on, man. No, 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 no. I'm saying the wind was... I'm talking about the game. I'm saying it was absolutely crazy and big... I mean, the poor kid could not cope. Comes from Turkey. He just couldn't cope. <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. Like, I don't know if he's good or not, but he just could not cope. Got in behind, Richarlison scored a good goal. I don't think the win was the, the reason why we lost. Let me just clear that up straight away. <laughs> but you guys have just said it. You know, you just felt like Everton were going to win. Yeah. And I think the factor that's gone away from Liverpool now is you just knew they're going to score last season or the last two seasons. Okay. You, you ask, you just like, my brother would joke here yeah, to hit me and my mates, oh, what minute Liverpool are going to score? 87? Is it going to be the 78th minute? You just knew that it was going to come. You just knew Liverpool were going to win and you knew Liverpool were going to get over the line. And that what made a great Liverpool team. And that's what made Liverpool win the Champions League and, and win the Premier League. That's gone. And, you know, when we go behind, we're not, we're not scoring, man. We're just not scoring. Brighton, it happened. It happened against Everton. It happened against Southampton. It's, it, it's gone. It's just gone. Um, we don't have a centre-back pairing. Henderson's injured and we are fully, fully screwed. Just yeah, Shahab, I don't know if you noticed this yet. Nacy, obviously you said you logged in the 30th minute of the game. But it was it was just setting the tone, the first kick of the game. Everton done a long ball. Yeah, 100%. No one nest the Ozjad and he just headed it out for a corner. <laughs> uh, well, listen. From that, it just went downhill for Ozkan or whatever his name is. Man. Ozan, Ozan and Kabak. Yeah. Um, like yeah. Listen, I don't know. I don't know what else to really say. Because in the last few weeks, I've been saying in the podcast that the the front three is a is an issue. Um, against Leipzig, it was great. I mean, it gave me belief that okay, we can play well. I'm not. I don't like the fact that Liverpool fans are saying that we're still playing slightly well. Yet not winning because I've seen people say that against Leicester, so, oh, against Leicester, did you know Liverpool did well and they capitulated, and then against Everton, they did okay. I think against Everton, Pickford had a blinder. I mean, it's mm. typical of the guy to have a blinder. Um, but he had a blinder and Liverpool couldn't score. But I've had enough of people telling me that we're playing well. We're not playing well. Firmino's not playing well. Sadio Mane has been appalling in the last two months. I mean, he's been a really, really poor season for him. Mohamed Salah can only do so much as he can. But as you were saying, Esco, there's moments where, you know, he just needs to get his head up and be better and be more sharper. But it's not just him. I think he's probably been the sharpest at the front three. Um, midfield is always is always different. The defence is always different. That disrupts Liverpool. Liverpool's system is, is dampened right now. And Klopp has to find a way quickly to try and get the results so that we don't fall out of the top four. And I did say to you guys that I think falling out of the top four is a Pure disaster for Liverpool. A pure disaster. We're not winning no Champions League. Let's just get that real out there. I think we're going to have a good run. I think we might go to the semi-finals, but we are not winning the Champions League with that centre-back pairing. The drop-off of quality is mad between the front three and the substitutes. That's clear. And it's just a disaster. I mean, I, 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 if someone told me, you know, I've been saying I'll do anything for Liverpool to win the league, I'm just wondering when it ends now. <laughs> it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I can't deal with it. Everton Football Club. Everton, oh my God. I mean, I hate Richarlison to a different level. And he scored and he broke uh, he broke up Thiago for three months. Jordan Pickford ruined my season by engine Van Dyke. I'm not over it. I don't care. It's people telling me to get over it. No, I'm not going to get over it. He hurt me. And he's funny <laughs> playing like that. It made me even more mad. Um, but Everton, yeah, it, it, I knew. I mean, we knew. You guys just said it at 1-0. You just felt like Everton were not going to lose the game. And... And they got the result. And, you know, Hoodoos have been broken at Anfield. And Manchester City broke it. Burnley, of all teams, broke it. And now Everton have done it as well. We've got What's that four losses in a row at home? Yep. Four losses in a row. And that is the worst in since 1923. So, Oof. talk about losses and, and, and records being broken. It's horrible. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think, guys. I, I, I'm just... 
it's a new low. I, I, we're not playing until Sunday. We've got Sheffield United uh, uh, away. I don't even think we can beat Sheffield United. That's that's the maddest thing. I don't know when our next game is going to come. Um, no, Kush, no more oof oofs, please, <laughs> because I am stressed, boy. I'm stressed. Um, we've got to move on. We've got to move on. Um, we're going to talk about the Champions League and the Europa League. I think we'll, we'll talk about the Champions League then from Tuesday. Liverpool did beat Leipzig by two goals to nil, which was great. Um, PSG beat Barcelona by four goals to one. Told you. Uh, yeah, so fair play, coach. Kylian Mbappe, wow, hat trick hero. Um, I think I'll probably ask you two when they play again in the second leg about who's going to go through, but that happened. Porto beat Juventus by two goals to one. I think we were all predicting and we all said, yeah, Juve, Juve. But I'll be honest with you guys, I think Juve's team is really poor. Yeah. Like their, mid- their, midfield, their midfield is very, very poor. Yeah, They've got too yeah. many centre-mids who do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Port- and Porto did really well. They won by two goals to one, but time will tell whether they could hold on. And Sevilla two, Borussia Dortmund three. And there was another man in the headlines again. Erling brought Holland. I mean, what a performance from him. He scored oh, two we goals. need those two players desperately, man. Desperately. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's going to be interesting one, Sevilla v Borussia Dortmund. So, um, yeah, any, anything you guys want to add from either one of those four games? Anything that impressed you? Mbappe is the real deal, mate. Yeah. Kylian Mbappe. If anyone, I, I've, I've seen, I've heard a couple of United fans with their rose tinted goggles on. Oh, Rashford, and look at the, look at the Rashford. And, and No, I'm not talking about you, Nacy, by the way. I'm talking about some. Yeah, of you. I'm just thinking. Any, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying. Who's saying all United fans. <laughs> So Rashford. that's why when they talk about me with Rashford and stuff, I'm just like, listen, you need to get close to him. But Mbappe is his age group. Like, you need to get close to Mbappe before we start gassing your name and stuff. But for me, Mbappe, uh, come on, man. You, yeah, you know, if, deal, I, real deal. if I can just chime Mbappe. in there. Mbappe. And Messi's over. It's over for Messi at Barcelona. It's over. Yeah, they, just need, they need to start fresh. They need to get rid of Messi, whatever it is. It's, they need to just let him go. He's the free transfer in the summer. He's finished. Like at Barca, yeah, at- Messi's not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's over. That cycle's over now. Yeah, for me, Mbappe was just yeah sensational. If you look at his last goal, um, there's something that he does that's probably not picked up by a lot of people. But when he was just about to shoot, he takes like four or five little steps just to seize himself up to wrap it in the top corner. And yeah, he's just for me, he's the real deal. But I also want to shout out Haaland as well. I think that kid oh, is just, oh. he's just a robot. I don't think he's real. I think he was made in a lab. A kid is there anything that, he can't do. A, a kid, a kid that size shouldn't have the stride and pace he has. A kid that size shouldn't be taken off the net. And he looks to me like a complete striker. Like yeah. you know when yes. you do a, yes. you know when you play pro yes. clubs. Yeah. On FIFA and you build a strike, he just looks like that type of FIFA player where, yeah, he's, he's just going to get better. Now, is there any goal he can't score? The only mm. thing, the only thing I think will hinder him is if he don't leave Dortmund. Like for me, I think he just needs to get out of there. Like he just needs to get out of there. Go somewhere big. I don't know Come where. United, Come United, man. See, I don't want him to go to these English clubs because I know these English pundits will get onto him and Mbappe. I just want him to go to Real Madrid and Barcelona. Just start something new over there. Just or something. I don't know. Well, right. Did you guys see Holland's goal against Schalke? In the... Yeah, it's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Incredible. ridiculous. Yeah, all right. So, four games. And we will do a prediction of who you, think, who you guys think will go through in the Europa League as well. Uh, let me just find those games. Yeah. All right. Lazio against Bayern Munich. In the Champions League. Oh, Bayern Munich again. Bayern. Bayern. Yeah, I think we'll probably... So, big game. Atletico Madrid against Chelsea. Atletico Madrid are top of La Liga against the Chelsea side. Atletico. Uh, a, f- a few weeks ago, I would have said Atletico clean, but they've not been on the best of form recently. <laughs> and I don't know, it might be a bit closer than people actually think. But I'm still going to say Atletico. Atletico lost 2-0 to Levante at home. Yeah, at home. Weekend. Um, let's go, what were you predicting for this one? Uh, for Atletico, Chelsea? Yeah. Yeah, man. Atletico, I can't. Like, if, now that they've got Suarez, I don't know why Barca gave them Suarez. And it's ironic that they've got Griezmann the season, season before. And I don't know, Griezmann just seems like he hasn't really lit it up at Barca like I, like I, I would have thought he's going to. Like, he's it's overrated. Just like Barca have got the short end of the, the stick on that. Suarez at his age, what's he, 33, 34? Still just bossing it in that league. Uh, we know they obviously got a good um, 
good system there with what they do. We've seen how they how they play in Champions League games anyway. Obviously, it's going to be different now. No crowd, none of that away stuff and all that. But we know if they go one nil up, looking at Chelsea now and how how I don't know they're not really fluid in their play. If Atletico Simeone decides to revert to his oh they're going to sit park these lot can't score. We know Atletico have got the you get me the ability and the manager to do that boy. I just yeah. think they've got more more Champions League experience in recent years. They've been to what what two finals in the last five years? If it's three, two, three, yeah, about two finals two. last couple of years. They won the Europa recently. I just think in terms of that Euro, Euro European juice, Atletico have just got more. And Chelsea ain't really getting me. They're not really. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, if I'm being honest, I, I think this is going to be a really poor watch of football. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, you know. It could be, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Atletico Madrid knocked out Liverpool. I was at both games. My first ever European away game, and Atletico Madrid was boy, that that was that's a tough team. It's a tough team to break down. And now that Suarez is scoring those goals, it's madness how Barcelona let him go. Yeah. So, uh, did yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me know what you guys think. Who we'll win in the in the comments below, guys? And then lastly, the two games: Atalanta against Real Madrid. Do you guys still think Real Madrid will be fine for that one? Yeah, Madrid. Yeah, they should be. Yeah, they should. Yeah. Be. Atalanta have lost one game out of 20. So that's an interesting one. And lastly, Borussia Mönchengladbach against Manchester City. So interesting City. game or City all day? Man City, but I think there'll be goals in that because for sure Mönchengladbach can score goals. They're a good yeah, side yeah, going forward. Very, yeah, very interesting side. Uh, I'm looking forward to see Turam and Alisson Player, two players I like very highly. And lastly... To be honest, I don't think we're going to predict two of these games. United are going through, Tottenham are going through. The other two games, uh, Arsenal Benfica. So, Nesco, I'll start off with you, man. Are you nervous? And do you think Arsenal can get the job done? I'm always nervous with Arsenal, but I'm going to try and be positive for once. And I'm going to say Arsenal are going to go through. Are you happy, Ips? I'm very, very, I'm so I'm happy. Don't tell me don't nonsense. I'm so happy. Yeah. If do you reckon Arsenal will be fine? Oh, uh, yeah. Benfica are one of the worst teams I've ever seen. They were poor. Absolutely poor. If Arsenal don't, if Arsenal don't beat them, I'm going to be like, I'll be on here next Sunday angry because they are a poor side, and we've got the away goal as well. So you just need to get the first goal. Yeah. Game's done. And Leicester, Slavia, Prague, probably more for you, Ibs, if you're watching it. You reckon Leicester, it? yeah, Leicester. Yeah. Goes through, yeah. What's the aggregate score now? Nil, nil, it's nil, nil. Oh, the nil. only thing that can go against Leicester is if Slavia, Prague score first. And uh, I want to shout out my favorite ever player in the whole wide world, Steven Gerrard's. Glasgow Rangers were four three up against Royal Antwerp, four away goals. Um, yeah, they're doing really well in the Europa League. I mean, I think when we talk about the Scottish League, like you were saying, Eve, your mom could probably win. Their yeah, she CL. could, hundred percent. But I think Rangers have done really well in Europe. They've beaten Porto, they've beaten um, Galatasaray, they've beaten Lille. I don't know if they've these clubs are big, but I just can't see any other the Scottish clubs in the last three four years to do that. And I think Gerard has probably deserves credit in what he's done. So yeah, big up Steven Gerrard, whatever. Um, right, start some and sell to end off this podcast then. And last week's one got people talking, boy. Um, but people asked, talking nonsense. That's no, what no, you were talking nonsense. nonsense. Yeah, um, uh, a lot of people agreed with your one, so I'm yeah, see, look, you see, guys, thanks for watching. Yeah, you know, oh, man, I've been saying this for a while. You know, listen, listen, coach, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you want to put Ronaldinho first, cool, but to put Messi as sold, not having that, that's all. I'm not having him over Zizou, no way, man. All oh, right. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, actually, I'm interested to see what you think, Nesco. What would you have picked? Ronaldinho, Messi or Zidane? It's a tough one, boy. It's a very, very tough... You know what, yeah? It comes down to... If if, I, if, I have, if I'm doing it personally, again, it's, it basically replicates, replicates Ibs one, man. Because Zidane was just at a time where... Like, Ronaldinho came at a time where it was kind of, to me, just after that golden era of football. Like, he was with them, man. But he was, like, the next Ronaldo. Do you get what I'm saying? He was, like, the next... Ronaldinho apparently it means little Ronaldo. You see what I'm saying? Whereas Zidane, I put him with that era where you got Zidane, you got uh, R9, you got Okocha. And Zidane was just the first guy. The reason why I put him number one is because, yeah, we know he had trickery. We know he, but he didn't have the pace. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ronaldinho, again, I wouldn't associate him with speed, but he had fast feet. Zidane had this skill where, okay, you man are fast, cool. I am going to slow down the game to my pace. No player can do that, bro. He literally, it was like he was moving in slow motion, but they still couldn't get near him. Then the guy can ping the ball left foot, right foot. He can volley it left foot, right foot. He can score you headers, late arrivals. Every... It was too much, man. It was too much. Ronaldinho, he's a typical, like, you get me, a Brazilian futsal player who 
Yeah, he just did it on it. And we've seen a lot of potential Brazilians who don't always match up to that potential. Ronaldinho was one of the few who was able to do that. I don't know, just for me personally, and Messi, it's just, come on, look at the, the, the individual accolades, how he's had to carry teams, sometimes some very poor teams, but he's still made a level of consistency. Like, it's even, it's the only reason I probably won't put Messi number one is because of my age group. If I was your age, I'll probably say Messi. Well, coach's reason was what he did internationally. So Listen, you can't, listen, it's the... Yeah, but it's international, yeah? Ronaldinho had, oh, nine, yeah, look at his, he had Rivaldo, he had other guys. Messi, bro, these guys are lacking. Di Maria Aguero, he, these guys are all oh, right. He had, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is what kills me. Whereas the Brazil team, yeah, everyone showed up. Cafu, Roberto, they all got busy. Lacey, Lacey, Messi, this is what kills abandoned. me. Messi got Lacey, abandoned by his team. Lacey, Lacey, this is what kills me, yeah. It's not actually the World Cup loss against yeah. Germany. I'll let him go with that one. Yeah. Copa America. The team. Okay, but he got two Copper Americas. It was the two Copper Americas in a row. Okay, Jules, Jules, Jules. Come on, man. Jules, Jules, Jules. We're not the great players are judged by international. People give Ronaldo credit for international for final. He didn't play in. You can't get that again. Individual games. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. We're gonna move on. We'll talk. We'll talk outside and your WhatsApp group as well. Come on. Ronaldinho had a big, big. Some people might even argue, George, and you could say it's. They might even say to me, yeah, Ronaldinho was the star of that team, but. Some people will tell you Ronaldinho weren't the star, bro. For some people, it would have been Rivaldo. For some people, it would have been Cafu. Like that. No, no, no. Cool, cool. No, he was only 22 then, anyway. Whereas so Messi, fine. he's just here by himself, and he's got a hope that other man can do their their thing. If they don't. Okay, but just 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 remember that Messi was riding Ronaldinho's wave, yeah. yeah again. Just remember no, that. No, no, no. Messi created his Ronaldinho's own wave. Look, look, Messi right, listen. Own wave. Ronaldinho gave him a little push, like, yo, look, cool, man. But <laughs> a little Messi push. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's move on. Um, so, this week's start, sub and sell is Lewandowski, Mbappe, Ooh. and Haaland. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is a hard one. That is another hard one. <laughs> One's finished in his career, and he's still a fantastic player. Two are going to be the two best players in the world. He did that dirty, man. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know what to think. So I want one of you guys to go first. Um... Okay, okay, I'm going to go first. first. Huh? Go on. We're going to start Mbappe. I'm going to, I'm going to sub Haaland and I'm going to, I'm going to sell Lewandowski. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. All right. Okay. I mean, are you, would you say that now or do you think because of the years to come by? Well, we just got to say now because obviously the other two are still got years to come. So yeah. I'm just saying my personal, my personal view, just looking at all round them as a player, just all round um, and whatnot. Mbappe, I think he could do everything. I think um, Haaland could do everything as well. Lewandowski, he's a clinical. What he does, he masters what he does. He's absolutely master. He's just a striker, clinical striker. That's what he is. Mm. Best of the best. But yeah, that would be my order. All right, you two. What do you think? Honest. I'll go different. And again, I don't, I'm not mad at anyone's opinion on this one because all three are sick. Yeah. It doesn't feel right to sub any to sell any of this. <laughs> I can't do this, bro. All right. I'm going to just say my start, yeah. And it's literally just because of longevity and experience. I'm going to start Lewandowski. Why? Because he's proven it time and time again. We've seen with some young players in the past. I'm not saying it's going to go, go that way with Mbappe and with Holland. But like, this is just the only way that I can I can justify it, yeah. Uh, but we see with certain players, we look and they have all this potential, and something just happens. They get to a point 23, 24, 25, and you understand they just don't quite maximize their potentials. They're still young, they're obviously doing the maddest. Like I even saw some number comparison with like Messi and Ronaldo at their age, those two are already apparently are ready ahead. And that's just talking about the numbers and not even the actual gameplay. I don't like to go off just numbers alone. But for me, Lewandowski, he's been here. He's done it, you understand, consistently. Yeah, maybe, he, obviously, he's played for Poland, not, never going to get a world, win a World Cup internationally. Mbappe has that, so it makes it harder. But, yeah, so, anyway, Lewandowski, just because of the longevity, consistency and experience, to summarise it. Mbappe, I'd have to put second. Again, a bit more experience than Holland because he's got the World Cup. And in real life, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, in real life, I wouldn't say this. Sorry, Erlen Holland, if you ever see this or any Erlen Holland fans, but... I have to, man. That's the only way I can justify it. I'm going to go the same as Nesco and for the same reason. So that's me done. So Ibs, you're going to wrap this one up then. And Harlan gets sold. Yeah, so I can start that. Harlan gets sold. Not in a bad way. I just don't... So wrong. 
Somebody buy it. Somebody start holding, man. That don't fall, yeah. <laughs> I know it don't. Harlan gets sold. The thing is, this one's hard for me because Mbappe for me is it, he could go down as good as Henri. That's how high I can I rate this kid. He could go down to be as good as Henri, right? And oh, but Lewandowski's just just something stupid. And I'm I'm gonna have to, and I hate that I'm gonna actually say this. I actually feel sick that I'm going to say this. I have to agree with Nacy. And it hurts for me to say that. <laughs> it hurts my soul to say I know it hurts you, bro. <laughs> it hurts me so bad. But for me, I have to start Lewandowski. And it's by like that much. And then I'll have to sub Mbappe. And then, um, uh, yeah, sell Arnold. But I think Mbappe will probably go down to be as good as Henri. He could, he, and I'm not. He could match R9. I'm not even joking. He's. Whoa, that whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, listen, wait, listen. wait, wait. Let me, let me land. Let me, let me explain. Yeah. The reason why I say this is this kid is ridiculous. If he can continue, he, I swear to God, he will be there with them lot. He might not be as good as R9. Say, let me be. I was premature, but he will be in that bracket of them strikers. I don't care. He will, he will sit at that table. Right. On, on that note, we're going to end it there then. So let me know, guys, in the comments below. Interact on, um, on Instagram. What would be your start sub and sell this week? Would it be Lewandowski, Mbappe and Harlan? And tell me which one we'd pick out of them three. So that's the end of the Team Talk TV podcast. Um, it's been a good one, as always. Nesco, always great to have you on. So thank you very much for coming on. Uh, yeah, we talked about United against Newcastle, um, Arsenal Man City. We've been talking about the, the, the clubs, Arsenal Man United as a whole. Um, Callum Watson Adoy, Liverpool, Tottenham, West Ham, Leicester, the Champions League, Europa League roundup will obviously start for themselves. So, um, yeah, guys, always great to have you on. Make sure you subscribe to Team Talk TV, guys. Thank you very much for always listening, the regular listeners and the new listeners. And we're going to have so much great more content in the next few weeks to come. So, um, yeah, make sure you do that and we'll see you next week. Peace.